Hello, Isabel and Grace. I'm here to talk to you guys about Lesson 68. And the topic of Lesson 68 is more about complex fractions. Oh, complex fractions are so cute. Remember that a fraction is considered a complex fraction if it has more than one line in it, more than one bar. So let me show you an example. 68.1, I'm on page 277. Here's an example of a complex fraction. This one's kind of a doozy. It's got an x over y plus a 1 over y. Now that doesn't make it a complex fraction because it's adding two fractions, but and they each have only one bar. So that in and of itself isn't a complex fraction. But look what I'm going to do to it now. Uh-oh, things just got crazy. And now here are two more fractions. So this whole thing is considered one fraction with four fractions within it. That is definitely a complex fraction. And we are going to simplify this. And by simplify, we mean that we're going to get it down to one bar, okay? Because that's a simple fraction rather than a complex fraction. So that is our task, you guys. We have to get this down to one bar. So here's some groovy steps to make that happen. Steps. First thing we're going to do is add the fractions. Fract, I missed the O in the numerator and in the denominator. Now, go ahead and write that and then I will stress something important to you. I'm waiting while you write and I'm thinking you're done probably about now. Okay, we're not adding, we're adding just the two dudes in the numerator and the two dudes in the denominator. We're not adding them together. We're just combining these dudes, combining these dudes. So let's do that. They have very thankfully already got matching denominators. So this is going to be super easy. We're going to say, I'm going to draw a big line here so that you can see. I'll make it more of a squiggle. So this is the next part of the problem. We've got x plus 1 over y in the numerator, x plus 1 both over y. And then in the bottom, notice they already match as well. We've got x minus 1 over y. Okay, so we've accomplished the first step. We added the numerator, we added the denominator. Sometimes we might have to fix those denominators so they match, but this time we didn't. Second step, multiply top and bottom by the reciprocal of the bottom. Remember, our goal is to always turn our denominator into a 1. And the tool we use, the little trick we use, is we multiply by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of our denominator is going to be y over x minus 1. I'm going to put that in parentheses so you can see that we're multiplying. So that will cancel out and become 1. But if we do it to the bottom, we have to do it to the top. That's our Hannah Cranny rule x minus 1, and that, as you can see, is not going to be so cute and perfect and simple, but it'll be fine. So, 3 is simplify, okay? And by simplifying, we'll see that all turns into a 1. It's good. And now here, notice we're multiplying. Let me put the brackets around it again to remind you. We're multiplying these. Now, before we multiply, so we're multiplying what's in the box. Let me make that clear. We've got kind of a mess going on here. We're going to multiply these two fractions by each other, but look, the y's cancel, and so our final answer is we have x plus 1 in our new numerator, and we have x minus 1 in our new denominator, and we have accomplished our goal of simplifying this complex fraction down to a fraction with a single bar. Yay, we did it. Isn't that fun? Super cool. All right, I'm going to have you guys no, I will do example 68.2, and then I will turn you loose after that. 68.2. This time, we have 1 plus 1 over x upstairs, and we have just a weird 7 downstairs. 
Okay, this one is confusing because it has numbers instead of fractions with letters. But we're going to figure it out. It's not going to be a big deal. Add the fractions in the numerator and the denominator. Okay, we can do the numerator. They don't have matching denominators because remember this is like 1 over 1. So we're going to have to make those match. Our least common multiple down here is a x. So we can multiply this by x over x, yeah? Top and bottom are the same. And then we'll be able to write that. I'm going to go sideways to use my paper better. We'll have, this will turn into x over x. So we'll have x plus 1 over x in the top. And then we'll have the big bar. And then I'm going to do something to the denominator. See what I did? I turned it from a whole number into a fraction. It's still the same number, but now we can see how we'll be able to multiply the top and bottom by the reciprocal of the bottom. This just makes it a lot easier to see that 1 over 7 is the reciprocal of the bottom. When you just have the whole number, it's kind of confusing. So we put the invisible 1 in place, and then we find the reciprocal, multiply the bottom and the top by the reciprocal. So now this all cancels, and now I'm going to go over here to do my next part. Now we have to do this multiplication, and I think you guys would agree with me that 1 times x plus 1, we're distributing that, but 1 times anything is the same thing, so we just have x plus 1 on the top, and then 7 times x on the bottom, 7x. And there we are, down to our single, um, our single bar. So it's now a simple fraction instead of a complex one. All right, let's show one, you one more wrinkle on this. This is example 68.3. It's getting kind of dark up there, I think, but hopefully we can still see. 68.3, 1 over x over 1 minus 1 over x. Okay, I'm going to add a 1 to the bottom of that. Uh, just so that my whole number doesn't confuse me. I'm going to add the fractions in the numerator and in the denominator. There's nothing to do up top. This I'll multiply by x over x so that these two will match. And now I will have 1 over x over x minus 1 over x. Makes sense? We've got lots of x's and 1's flying around. Now we multiply the top and bottom by the reciprocal of the bottom. So I flip that little fraction, and I write him above and below. This cancels, and now we're multiplying those two. x times 1 is x. x times the quantity x minus 1. I'm going to write it in that form. And now you can see that we have one more step we can simplify because here's an x and here's an x. Notice this x is not being added or subtracted to anything. He's only being multiplied. That means he is available to be canceled. And our final version of this is 1 over x minus 1. Make sense? All right, I'm going to have you guys do 68.4 together. So go ahead and pause me and do example 68.4. That's on page 278. And then come back when you're done, and I want to just show you one more thing in example uh, 68.5 that's slightly different. So go ahead and pause me, work that problem, come back when you're done. Okay, good job, you guys. I'm assuming that you figured it all out and got it right. 68.5 has some a new wrinkle to it that I'm just going to help you sort through. Go ahead and look at that on page 278. Notice that it's got negative exponents in it. What on earth, what on earth is this all about? Well, I'm going to give you one more additional step. And that is convert the negative exponents. And I'm just going to use the minus sign. Convert the negative exponents to fractions first. So this is the, the new step and then follow the previous steps, okay? So in classic John Saxon style, he's giving, oh, this is supposed to say steps. Okay, in classic John Saxon style, he's giving us one thing to do first. Now, 
Converting these to fractions is kind of tricky because you have to pay attention to what you're doing. Notice that the minus 1 applies only to the a, and the a is being multiplied to the x. What that tells us is the x stays right where it is, and the a goes down below it. Notice that it doesn't go down to the bottom of the big bar. The big bar is going to be here. The a just goes to the bottom of this little dude, the, the little pairing with the x. And the same goes here. The, this minus 1 over the b tells us that he still is being compared to the y, but he goes down to the basement. All right? The plus sign stays the same. So notice that this converts to that, and this converts to that. That's a tricky place for a lot of students to get mixed up. So pay attention to how those negative exponents work. And then in the bottom, we've got x to the minus 1. Well, we don't have anything else to stay on top, so we'll have an invisible 1 in our new little baby numerator, and then our x will go down below. Okay, and then from there you can follow the other steps. We would add these together. I'm going to let you guys take this one the rest of the way, example 68.5. Um, now that I've helped you work through the negative exponents, go ahead and finish example 68.5, and then you will be good to go on the whole lesson. Have fun with that one.